What's up everybody? Today I'm going to be discussing how to train for distance when you're doing field work. Alright, so before I get to the video, I would like to announce that I, for the foreseeable future, am a member of Team Flippy Disc Golf. Flippy makes amazing disc golf apparel that is very comfortable and it's made of high quality material. So go to flippydiscgolf.com to shop for any disc golf apparel needs and use code RWEST71 for 10% at checkout. As per any field work session, you should always warm up, get the arm loose, throw a lot of shots, very soft, making sure that you're not going to hurt your arm or your body in any way. Now, after you have warmed up, I feel like there are four key factors for when you are throwing for distance. Number one is your form. If your form does not allow you to throw with speed and to throw smoothly, throw with spin, um, your disc will want to come out earlier and not get a full flight path and, of course, not give as much distance as if you were throwing with more arm speed. The second factor I feel is luck. And when I reference luck, I'm really thinking about the wind and how it's affecting your disc. If you're throwing into a headwind, of course your discs are going to flip more, but it's also going to slow down quicker. If you're throwing with a tailwind, they will stable up quicker, but it's going to force your disc forward more if you are throwing those down. The third factor, in my opinion, is your disc choice. If you choose too stable of a disc, then you won't be able to get a full flight path necessarily, or it will want to fight to the ground quicker. If you pick too flippy of a disc, then it could be really tough to find that perfect flip point to get a truly full flight where it can get on that turn angle, then fight back at the end. And then the fourth factor in my opinion, is then the fourth factor, in my opinion, is your shot shapes. And that really also depends on your disc choice, but the shot shapes can be uniform for when throwing distance lines. In my opinion, throwing highs or flips, high turnovers, a lot of height and throwing nose down is really uh, integral in throwing really good distance lines. Now, though... I have previously explained how I effectively get my form work done when I'm doing field work. I will put a link to that video in the description. But for distance, it's a little bit more complicated, and I'm going to go through some of my key points when I'm thinking about throwing for distance. Now, if you've ever heard of the, the saying, slow is smooth and smooth is far, that is entirely true, but not for the reason that you think. The entire reason why slow is smooth and smooth is far works is the idea of spin. And really, there's two ways to get a disc to really flip over if you're throwing a hyzer flip. And one is torque, which can happen A, from bad form, or B, just from your natural body mechanics. But spin is what, if you have high spin, it will flip the disc easier, so you can throw a less percentage with high RPMs and be able to get a full flight of the disc while throwing with a slower arm speed. So when I think about throwing smooth, I really do slow down my run up a little bit. And of course, what I did, did say before is that I do speed up my run up when I'm going for distance lines. It's only a tiny bit, and that's because I'm used to, I'm used to uh, throwing distance with the same form without taking extra steps in my run up. But when I, when I do try to go smooth and a lot more spin, I am really relaxing my shoulders, re relaxing my body, focusing 
on where the disc needs to be released. And again, just relax, smooth run up, good timing, and just puts the disc out there, just like that. Now, another key factor that I wanna talk about in your form when you're throwing distance lines is the off arm. And this is something that I have recently added is that the off arm can really set my timing if I'm shooting it into my body. If I'm shooting it, it forces this hip to kind of cave in, but you're pushing your momentum this way and you're kind of forcing it into the disc. So again, if I just allow it to time myself, I'm gonna get a little bit extra distance because of the momentum. And the last idea that I want to get um, really defined is um, the idea of hip lock and that you need to use your hips a lot more when you're throwing for distance. They allow you to get more power, to get pushed into the disc and allow for your arm to move much fast, faster, therefore giving you arm speed. But this is really something that you have to try first to get to feel. When your legs really aren't that spread apart, where there's barely any space right here, then you can really rotate pretty freely and the hip lock is not as much if you know how to use your hips. But when it's, you know, out here a lot more staggered, you're really locked right here to where all your energy is going to be forced into your hit point. And there's only, there is only one way for your hip to move and where it's going into this front hip and out through the disc. And what allows me to do this in my form is instead of, you know, running much more vertical, I will change it to going a lot more diagonal in my run up. And you will see that my stopping position is a lot more staggered, which allows me to get my hip lock and force my power into the disc. And as you can see, we're gonna test the idea right here. As we made it into the goal, which I'm not sure what that range is, but that's, fa that's farther than the other mids that I threw. And as you can see, I did those all separately where I was fully thinking about only one part of the form. And when I put these all together, it can give me a lot more distance, a lot more arm speed, a lot more spin. And I have a Crush Boys CD1, it's pretty flippy. I'm gonna put it on some hyzer. For reference, you see the bushes back behind the soccer goal back there. That is about in the 420, 430 type of range. So I'm gonna try to put this all together, just be smooth, have hip lock, be relaxed, and just allow my the disc to pull straight through. overturned it but still you can see how far it got very quickly as you know i did talk about wind right now we have a basically direct headwind so my discs are going to flip up and not want to go as far i got a really flippy destroyer uh my max distance discs are destroyers they're both star destroyers this blue one is a lot more flippy than the purple one and i'm going to try to give a showcase right here of what a really good distance line look, looks like before i describe what i'm doing as you can see full flight slowed down because of the headwind finishes in that 410 type of range now what you could notice there is that i was trying to give my disc a lot of height if you can give a pretty neutral disc to understable disc on a hyzer flip get it high nose down and then it starts to turn pretty tough if you give it enough height it will be able to come out get a full flight and when you're throwing those over i mean understable discs really high nose down get them to turn you're throwing them fast they can crush and see with more overstable discs what you may have to do is do the entire thing on anheuser just takes out a little bit more of the flight but still anheuser with the stable disc fighting out the entire way but 
as it just keeps on moving, moving, moving on Anheuser and just crashes at the end, that's still going to give you a lot of dif uh, distance. Here, I got an old Innova Made C Line PD. I'm going to give it some Anheuser and try to give it height to show you what I mean. Look at that. That is annihilated. into the brush exactly proves my point about just getting it height to that turn angle and another point that i talked about is that sometimes your disc choice can kind of hurt you i have a horizon cloudbreaker right here it's really domey but it's still really really stable especially uh with my arm speed i don't have the arm speed to get these to turn out of the box so i still have to rip these on a lot of anheuser if i want to get a lot of distance out of these but i only really use it for wind fighting but See, what happens when I put it high, Anheuser, rip it hard, and try to get it to turn, which the disc naturally does not want to do. Holds for a little bit, but it fights out a lot quicker. That's probably in the 400, 410 type of range. But your disc choice, instead of going really, really stable you can go just more understable to neutral, just give it more height, try to get it nose down, and naturally you give the disc more height, it's gonna run out of speed on the turn and want to fight out at the end. Here's another example, Neutron Time Lapse. It's probably a tick under instability compared to that Horizon Cloud Rake. are gonna give it height and Anheuser to show you that getting that overstable disc sometimes just isn't the the thing that you want. It's going to fight out really quickly. But see, if I threw that same angle with a more neutral disc, it's going to carry for so much longer. And it's if you give it enough height, it will fight out at the end and be able to get a max distance line. Another thing, if you're in the place where you can't get a disc that high with turn, uh, nose down, pick up a really flippy disc. Here I have a Lone Star Alpha Lariat. It is the flippiest disc I have in my bag. And I can throw it very softly and get a full flight out of it. As you can see, put it on hyzer, already turning, 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 getting out. That was a pretty nice flight. Here's a dynamic lucid vandal. Again, very, very flippy. But you just put these with if for people that have less arm speed, you put these on Heiser, you get them to pop up and turn. Or you can again with less arm speed, if you need to put them flat, they still get the turn that you need. So, put this one on hyzer, slight left to right, so it's going to carry a little bit more, but hyzer and soft. You can see flipped up, turning, 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 turning. That was pretty low line. Almost all the way to the soccer goal. And I threw that very, very soft. So, don't be deceived by the numbers on a distance driver. Get, get flippier disc if your arm speed is not that high. And then you can work up by changing your form and learning how to control your angles, control, control your nose angle. And then you can be able to throw really high Anheuser's really high hyzer flips with those same pretty understable discs. Then you can work to get more stable discs. Again, getting more arm speed get them higher, nose down, and let them carry. So to end off this video, I'm gonna try to get a couple really nice rips with my destroyers, just try to show you what giving a disc height and getting on its natural turn angle can do. Of course, with both of my destroyers, right now we have a left to right slight head. The slight head is canceled out by the left to right for a righty backhand, so course going to turn more going to slow down more so it really does cancel out 
So first blue destroyer, try to use the test that I said. Gave it height, going to get a full flight. That one in the probably 430, 440 type of range. See what I can do with the purple destroyer. Got an airdrop, but that one's still moving very quickly. That one is into the brush, so it would have went a lot farther if not for the brush, but still pretty good for the wind that I was uh, given, as now I see it's changed to a direct head. So I'm going to use U-Disc and try to see uh, what distances it will give me. Okay, we got our range at plus or minus 14 feet. It is pretty cloudy out here today, so probably not going to be as accurate for reference. Completely sunny day, had a shot measured at over 530 feet. That was my first shot over 500. That was officially measured by a, a range finder. And the range finder measured at 503. So take the plus or minus in the, in the teens with a grain of salt when it comes to U-Disc. But about halfway there, when it comes to the, the Purple Destroyer. Coming up on the purple destroyer right now. I'm guessing this is in the 430 type of range, truly. Right over it, U Disc says 4 460. Getting back up and range. I'm guessing this one is about in the 450 type of range. Marked at 470. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any disc golf apparel needs, go to flippydiscgolf.com. Use code RWIS71 for 10% off at checkout. Have a good day. Thanks for watching.